I would like to first and foremost thank Hazrat Mullah Mufti Sajid Hussein Qadri Sahab for allowing me and giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you all today. Alhamdulillah, for the past few months I have been studying under him, studying fit under him, and it is with his efforts and the, the blessings, his blessings, and the prayers from my parents and my grandparents that I am here in front of you today. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I just had the honor to recite to you the ninth ayah from Surah Al-Zumar. In the ayah before this one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of a certain kind of person. One who forgets the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thus strays. He then proceeds to ask in the next ayah, قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ are those who know equal to those who do not know? SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the state of knowing, the state of possessing knowledge, as the differentiating and defining aspect of a believer to a non-believer. He associates the lack of knowledge with those who hold the darkness and void of kufr in their hearts. The very darkness our beloved Prophet vanquished when he graced the earth with his presence. The darkness we know as Jahiliya. Knowledge, ilm, is the light and power of the mu'min. It gives one the ability to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. It grants one the confidence and faith to remain steadfast on the path of good. Knowledge strengthens the movement with the ability to make his own decisions regardless of what is going on around him. What was the first word to be ever revealed to our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala began the series of revelations that would guide us all by commanding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam read Iqbalah. The importance given to knowledge during the Prophet ﷺ's time was so high that non-Muslim captives would be free if they spread knowledge into the Muslim community. In Surah Al-Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ بِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ He says, indeed, that only the knowledgeable servants of His can truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge takes one to unimaginable heights in the qurb of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Hadrat Ghaut al-A'adha Muhyiddin al-Jilani radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, in his famous Qasidat al-Ghautiyah, da'astu al-ilma hatta sirtu qutba. He says, I attain knowledge, I acquired knowledge until I became a qutb. Subhanallah. When we learn and ponder upon the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teachings of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we understand what our purpose of existence is. We comprehend what measures we must take to achieve the satisfaction and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we must go about doing this. Our moral compass is disciplined and guided through knowledge compared to the confusion and ambiguity of ignorance. Just as physical light helps us see our surroundings, the light of knowledge helps us interpret and analyze what will aid us in our path to Jannah and what will hinder us and hold us back. Such is the level of the ulama, the knowledgeable scholars, that it is narrated in Dimity, inna ulama awafatul anbiya that indeed, the knowledgeable scholars are the inheritors and heirs of the Anbiya, the Prophets themselves. Without fundamental knowledge, the Mu'min falls into constant sin. If he does not know, for example, the Farais of Wudu, the conditions of Ghusl, what breaks one Namaz, and the requirements for Zakat, he will be unconsciously leaving out mandatory parts of his religion. Without essential knowledge, 
one inevitably sins day in and day out. Indeed, we must expand our efforts in our quest for him, for it is what strengthens our iman and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only this, but we must implement and apply whatever knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with to fix whatever sinful habits we may have and to further enhance and maintain our good habits. <coughs> we must help uplift those who do not have knowledge of something yet by sharing and spreading the knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. We must get help from those who are more knowledgeable than us to reform ourselves. It is in this way that the betterment of the Ummah of the Prophet Rasulullah will occur. Alhamdulillah, under the guidance of Hazrat Ibn Mufti, Sajid Hussain Fadli Sahab, I too am undertaking my quest for knowledge. I am grateful for him, I am grateful to him for teaching me all that he has. He introduced me to the intricacies of our religion I had previously not known existed. For example, in a sunnah, to first place one's knees, then hands, then nose, then forehead when going into sajda, and the opposite when getting up. Every specific rule our religion has placed down for us clearly defines what is expected of us as believers. There are oceans full of knowledge for us to gain. Only we must make the effort to receive it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that knowledge which is beneficial to us and continuously increase us in knowledge and wisdom for as long as we are living. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive any mistake I have made when speaking today and allow us and give us the tawfiq to practice upon whatever was discussed today. Ameen wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah wa ta'ala ameen. Jazakallah.